Hi. Hey. Good morning. Morning, sis. Hi, sis. We're back. We're back. Thanks again, everybody, for your feedback. We're getting quite techy over here, and um, we've come up with a new addition, and we want to talk about it just briefly. This is going to make your lives easier, and it's called our resource list. And it is a list of links, easily accessible. And I'm going to show you where in a minute. Just but one correction. It's called helpful resource list. Helpful resource. Helpful. Not help. Not helpful. <laughs> no. Help. Heavenly resource. Heavenly resource list. <laughs> we Yanks call it resource, and down under it's resource. So. That's right. Okay, it's a list with a lot of really cool links on it. Uh, right now, it's got a direct link to the gap diagram, um, all the diagrams that are in the manual for holy relationship, um, the blog directory. If you're starting to read the blogs that Nook has written, you're gonna start getting how valuable this is. So this link takes you right to the directory and you can just type in search terms and queries and come up with there's so much good, free, rich, did I say free, uh, content for you, okay? So the blog directory link, a link to go straight to the end of death, volume one, and the manual, which is volume two. It'll give you a sample chapter. You can listen to a piece of it through, a portion through audio. And it also has the Amazon link to take you to purchase either one of those. It has the link that takes you to the total transformation course and the holy relationship journey which is where we're unpacking the manual for holy relationship online so right there in one document is all of these links and we'll be adding to it as we go okay so for people like me <laughs> i'm going to share my screen uh okay share screen here we go all right so every not the not the end of death YouTube homepage, but following every single one. I look constipated. <laughs> well, you're very you're a very attractive constipated woman. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> wow. All right. So after every single lesson, this one happens to be lesson six. Follow my cursor. Come down here with me where it says show more. If you click on that, there it is. Everything opens up. Here is your list of helpful resources. And you can see it. There's the full gap diagram. I mean, all those things that I just listed. So you have fun, go through it, dive into it, grab whatever you want out of there. Um, it's wonderful. And again, to collapse that, you would just do show less. Okay, so that's how you do it on a desktop and stop share. Now, if you're, you have an iPhone. Or if you have Android. Or an right? Android. Be your Andro uh, what do you call it? iPhone, I'll show you on that. Yeah, so this is again, I think this is ACA and lesson six. Look at right where it says the lesson, come straight across and you'll see this little down arrow. Oh, there it is, <laughs> okay. So fantastic. There's all your free resources. So just look for that little down arrow. Okay. Yep. And I think we've got, oops, I think we have the same on the Android or similar, right? Can, can you, oh, where is it? Yeah. So, ASIM lesson six, right? right across. There's a little yes, down arrow down button, right? Yeah. Press that. And there, there's the helpful there resources are. coming up. See? Yeah. We got this. <laughs> we have to actually go to a lesson in order to access that. But it'll be there after every single lesson. So you don't have to go swimming and fishing for it. It's uh, It'll be right at your fingertips, okay? So we hope that that helps and we are a work in process. We're gonna be quite professionals by the time we're done. Um, so thanks for hanging in and thanks for asking how to access the gap diagram. Where's the blog directory? Okay. We're and the other thing too um, that we're adding to the helpful resources list. <laughs> Did I say it right? No, it's resource. Uh, <laughs> a resource. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, whatever. I'll learn it. I've only been here 20 years in the States. You probably might have it right. That's okay. <laughs> um, we're going to add to that the, uh, you know, the seven essential principles of quantum forgiveness. Mm -hmm. They are so, so helpful. Great to print those out, keep them somewhere that you can see them yeah. all the time. And the little mini prayer as well, uh, forgiveness prayer. And the seven keys to authentic relating. Mm -hmm. They are, we're going to talk about that later on as we get yeah. more deeply into the lessons. So just and, know that we're um, going to take everything that we cover off and add to support these workbook lessons. It's all going to be made available to you guys. And um, that'll be a great place. Just it's, it'll be your go-to place to grab the link to find what we're talking about. Very good. Yeah. Good. That's it. Okay. Today's lesson, 56. You feel like reading? I think you should read. Okay. Our review for today covers the following. Number one, my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. How can I know who I am when I see myself as under constant attack? Pain, illness, loss, age, and death seem to threaten me. All my hopes and wishes and plans seem to be at the mercy of a world I cannot control. Yet perfect security and complete fulfillment are my inheritance. I have tried to give my inheritance away in exchange for the world I see, but God has kept my inheritance safe for me. My own real thoughts will teach me what it, my inheritance, is. Interesting because if we're the, the word itself invulnerable means beyond attack, right? Well, it means, yeah, it means to be immune to all attack. That's right. Right. But the thing is, uh, you know, while we still believe that attack is real and belief is the word here, while we still uh, believe that we need to defend ourselves from real attack, uh, we're going to be actually blocking mm -hmm. our invulnerability, our immunity to attack. I know it sounds totally counterintuitive, but that's how the ego works. The ego is a, a block, is, is the block to the love that we are and the immunity to all of the mm -hmm. uh, ego's phenomena mm -hmm. uh, out in the world, in the dream, pain, illness, loss, aging, and death. Yeah. Right, right. And it proves that mythical me is not what you are, because if you are invulnerable, well, then pain, illness, loss, age, and death seem to threaten me. Well, if, if what you are in truth is invulnerable, who is this me that seems to be under attack constantly? Then you can make that positive separation again. Yeah, that's very helpful, sis. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got to make that positive separation. Right. Well, How did you guys stuff. like the positive separation blogs? Boy, that was huge for me. I loved it. If you haven't read it, I think it was yesterday's, the last lesson. Anyway. Okay. Two. Is that all right, sis? We're good yeah. to go? Thank Two. you. Two. Above all else, I want to see. Recognizing that what I see reflects what I think I am, I realize that vision is my greatest need that what I see is a reflection of what I think I am. So I realize that vision is my greatest need. The world I see attests to the fearful nature of the self image I have made. If I would remember who I am, it is essential that I let this image of myself go. As it is replaced by truth, vision will surely be given me. And with this vision, I will look upon the world and on myself with charity and love. Mm, what a relief. Yeah. What a relief, right? So mm -hmm. in the first couple of lines, he says, recognizing that what I see, you know, what I see in my body, 
you know, what I see in others, in my relationships, what I see in the world, what I'm still seeing in my past, um, <clears throat> they, they all reflect what I think I am. Yeah. And uh, that statement is to kind of drive home that what we think we are mm -hmm. is uh, an opponent of God, right? That's pretty severe, I know. Yeah. But while we, while we do see a world that can attack us and while we really believe it and we're defending ourselves from it, we must believe deep down in the unconscious that we that that God is our opponent. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Because we've made this false self apart from God. And therefore guilty. Yes. Um, and also that, you know, every moment it's like we're checking in. If you look, if you turn and look within and decide, you know, if you're looking with the ego, you look within and all you do is find lack right we're in a world apart from our creator apart from creation it's us against the world we're in need it's always fearful and unworthy. so yeah unworthy right? unworthiness and then we're going to think that our salvation lies out there so we're going to be trying to get to stuff the lack that we think we are we are a state of lack by being separate and sinful However, if we turned around and looked within and found that we're truly the Christ, the son of God, holy and complete, then the world's going to be showing us images. Just we're going to be radiating our wholeness and the world shines back to us confirmation. Remember those witnesses we talked about, the world will send us witnesses of yes, holy son of God, right? So what, how we see ourselves, what you believe about yourself is going to dictate what kind of world you find yourself living in. So if I would remember who I am, it's essential. We first have to let go of this, you know, mythical me say, I don't know what I am, but Holy spirit, I'm willing to be shown. And that's a deep sense of surrender and humility to say, I don't know. All these years trying to make and improve a mythical me, am I willing to just open up a little bit and say, this may not be what I am and I'm, I'm willing to be shown. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, sis. And I, just to add to that too, is our greatest need is to know our holiness, mm. which is our incorruptible innocence. Right. That's our greatest need. That's when we see with Christ vision, that's what we're going to see. That's what we're going to feel. We'll see it within and therefore we're going to see it outside as well, right? And that all comes from forgiveness, forgiving ourselves for having mm, perceived what is not really there. No. That's all forgive. I'm always forgiving myself for believing that the separation could have occurred in the first place. I just, I believed it. It was a preposterous thought, but we lent it our belief. And then all of this seemed to arise in that belief. But um, so it's about knowing thyself, know yourself above all else. I want, there's that choosing the willingness, the desire, the invitation to Holy Spirit. I want to see. Okay. Now that a little more added now, three, above all else, I want to see things differently. The world I see holds my fearful self image in place and guarantees its continuance. While I see the world as I see it now, truth cannot enter my awareness. I would let the door behind this world be open for me that I may look past it to the world that reflects the love of God. Yeah. There's that realization that, you know, creation is here. The kingdom of heaven is infinite. We live in God and it's here for us as a present possibility to experience the real world or a happy dream. When we remove all of our self-imposed blocks, This whole entire world as we've made it 
as we desire it to be is our defense against allowing that direct experience of, of love, right? Everything, the mythical me and the world and our relationships and the way that we're seeing it, that, that ego filter prevents us from experiencing reality as it really is. Yeah. So listen, I would let, I would let the door behind this world be open for me. Again, we're not responsible, but we, it requires, because the ego can't be part of the solution, but it does require our willingness that we would let Holy Spirit open this door so that the world can, that we can look past what we've made and see what's actually there. Okay, anything sis? No, I'm really feeling into this and just uh, uh, basking the infinite security and safety of this feeling yeah. so beautiful yeah. yeah how many times a gratitude comes up that god's love was so perfect that his answer to our request for separation was one word inconceivable oh, thank god <laughs> I mean, that's how perfect his love is where could we go you know he would never let the separation occur that's why we're only dreaming thank god and the dream will disappear as soon as we choose to have to to not uh, desire it any longer that's it that our desire look how powerful our desire is <laughs> mm, yeah when we will with God, that's creation. When we try to do a self a will apart from God, then it's the ego and it's just making and it's all dreams and nothing real is happening. So, yeah. All right. So that's above all else. I want to see things differently because there's a different way to see it. God is in everything I see. Excuse me. God is in everything I see. Behind every image I have made, the truth remains unchanged. Behind every veil I have drawn across the face of love, its light remains undimmed. And beyond all my insane wishes is my, is my will united with the will of my Father. God is still everywhere and in everything forever. And we who are part of him will yet look past all appearances and recognize the truth beyond them all. So ultimately we, because we share the mind of God, his will is our will. So it is the end is certain, it is inevitable. Uh, we will look past what we have made with an ego, which does not exist, to the truth beyond it. And I got to say, that's really the key about how Jesus healed. He never pulled up and was drawn into anything that was brought to him appearance-wise. He was so, his will was so perfectly attuned and at one with God that there was no fear, there was no ego in his thought. And so he was able to look be past all false appearances and beheld the son of God, where a sick person would appear to us. He saw the Christ, the son of God, one with him. And it was in that correct view of that person that corrected lameness, the blood hemorrhaging, blindness, deafness, death. Yeah. So, so Really? You're talking about uh, looking past appearances, mm -hmm. what Jesus did. That's Isn't it. that the same as forgiveness, quantum forgiveness? Mm -hmm. It is. So he withdrew mm -hmm. all belief in what the ego was um, manifesting at the form level. Yes. He could see straight through it. That's right. So with us, as we learn to practice quantum forgiveness, we will do the same thing, which is we'll be withdrawing the veil of the ego veil, which is our belief that we can be attacked, which is fundamentally the belief that we did separate from our brothers and sisters in God. Right. And then, of course, we're going to be seeing what's really there behind 
the ego's veil of illusions. Because God is in our mind. We won't be thinking through an ego thought filter. We will be knowing with the mind of God. And what is a false belief in the presence of the knowing of the mind of God? Ha! <laughs> Laughable. There would be nothing in our thought that could bite down or consent or believe what appearances were showing us. Right. Yeah. So this is great. God is in everything I see. So we could see the evidence and presence of God instead of what the ego has made as a cover up, if you desire it. And he assures us that this is going to happen and is happening and has happened. Okay. Number five. God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. In my own mind, behind all my insane thoughts of separation and attack, is the knowledge that all is one forever. I have not lost the knowledge of who I am because I have forgotten it. So we haven't lost it merely because we forgot it. It has been kept for me in the mind of God who has not left his thoughts. That's and I, yes, we are his thoughts, right? And I, who am among them, God's thoughts, am one with them and with him. So God is with his thoughts. We are those thoughts. And all these thoughts reside in the mind of God and share that mind. That's creation. So it would have to follow that God is in everything I see because God is right here in our mind and available to us the moment that we desire something else. We desire the truth. We desire Christ's vision. So can I just add something about Christ's vision? Jesus told me this in 2011. God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. Mm -hmm. Everything that God sees through my mind is therefore healed. That's it. Thank you. Okay. That's so big. Isn't it? That's it. That's how healing so, happens. That's it. When, when Christ is looking, when we allow the Christ within to look, to see, that's when real miracles, I mean, just become an everyday occurrence. That's right. Those were all the miracles that Jesus performed. It still seemed to be in the realm of where people were body identified, but fear was changed into the fearful image was replaced by the highest ideal or the loving image, but still in this realm. So a blind man could then see, right? A lame man jumped up and walked. A dead man rose up and lived, right? So it's not the absolute, but miracles make the correction, but still at this level. And it's where fear is replaced by the love or the mind of God. We're seeing with God. Yeah. Thank you. I think that caps it, right? Yeah, and one last thing. Um, all of these lessons, oh yeah, most of them, <laughs> include the word God. And I don't know that there's a whole lot of us out there, including myself in the beginning, that really had a solid sense of what God is, the nature of God, the will of God, I, we say our will and God's will is one. Well, what does that mean when you have no clue about what the will of God is? Um, the laws of God. And so um, in support of lesson 56, down below under show more or the arrow, we're going to include a blog entitled 
variableness in God, not a chance. That was my title. Catchy, huh? <laughs> okay, so that's for lesson 57, right? 56. 56. Sorry. So okay. that, it'll be in that yeah. helpful resources area down there underneath the video. Yeah. That's where we're going to put these. Yes. Okay. For You'll today only. Right. This one's for today only, but I think it'll support your understanding about the nature and will of God. And it'll help us assimilate all these lessons that talk about God for those of us who don't know God or have a relationship or a sense about him. There's a lot of fear. And so that might be preventing you from really allowing these to dawn. So get to know your creator. And when you see the word God, it won't bring a spike of fear, but of trust and um, gratitude that, that God is love. So have fun with the blog. Right. That's an audio recording, that link that's in that box underneath. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Lesson 56. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye.